Okay, we just finished up a unit, and so that means we're gonna start a new unit. And do you have any clue what the new unit is about? Yes? Functions. It is about functions. So, the functions unit starts with a bunch of functions that we kind of hope you know, but we don't know whether you do or not. Would you just show me if you know what y equals x squared is by making a quick sketch of it? I bet you a lot of people will know this. y equals x squared. And if you don't remember it, Make sure you sketch it because you are expected to know it from now on. You should be like, recognize it, kind of like, oh, that's an octagon, or that's a square. This is a parabola. Raise your hand if you had that generally right. Okay. Now, let me tell you how we make this parabola. It goes like this. I'm going to make an XY chart, and I'm going to make a whole bunch of points that are on this and then you just play connect the dots it's like if i told you the dots were here 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 and here you'd have been able to connect those dots wouldn't you so where are the dots when i put in zero into the function if x is zero what does y have to be zero that's why this point right there zero zero exists what if i put in a two well then i'm put a two here and what is two squared it's four so then this must be four two comma four is on my graph. That'd be this point. How about three? You catching on to this? Three goes in and you get what? Nine. How about negative one? It gets squared, becomes positive one. Good. That's like this point here, or maybe here. And I should put in one, one on each side. How about negative two? What if you square that, what do you get? Four, positive four. So negative two, positive four, that might be like that one. Are you getting how I'm getting these points? I'm sticking the numbers into the equation. All right, here's another one that we would hope you would know. Y equals X. Super simple, don't overthink it. If you're like, I'm not sure what that looks like, make an XY chart, find a bunch of points that are on it, connect the dots. If I put in zero, I get zero. If I put in one, I get one. I'm starting to get a pattern here. How about if I put in two? Two. How about negative one? Negative one. So then if you graph this, do you get that it's a straight line running like that? Okay. See how if you forget what they look like, you can just make a chart. I'm going to give you one, in fact, that you don't even know what it looks like. May, some of you know this, but then please make me an XY chart and tell me five points that are on it. I'm going to pause for a second and give this a try. Hint, you get to pick anything you want for X. Stick it in, see what Y would be. So here's some points. I put in zero, I get zero. I put in one, I get one. This is getting kind of boring. I put in two, oh, that's more interesting. What's two to the third? Eight. How about negative two? Did anybody put in negative two? If you did, you got negative eight. All right, now I'm gonna graph these. Zero, zero, one, one, two, eight, negative two, eight, Negative two, negative eight, sorry, is way down there. The one I kind of skipped over was negative one. What's negative one when you put it in here? Negative one. So then that's here. And then you just have to play connect the dots. Does anybody actually remember that function now that you see it? Okay. So some of you probably saw x to the third before. But what my point is, is that you don't have to memorize all of them if you I would be ideal if you did memorize them, but if you forgot one, you just make an XY chart and you can figure it out. All right, one more that I guess I hoped you would know, but I know you might not for judging by other classes. Do you guys know what the square root of X looks like? If not, make an XY chart, play connect the dots, and you'll be like, oh, that's where it is. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to give that one a try. Okay. So, what if I put in a, how about a zero? That's a little weird. What's the square root of zero? 
That's zero. What if you put in a one? What's the square root of one? One. How about a two? Ew. Square root of two? I don't even know what that is. I know it's some decimal. But then I'm just going to not pick that. You can put any numbers you want, right? So why don't I pick something nice like four? I put in a four and I get two. And give me one more. Nine. I like it. And you get what? Three. Perfect. Now I'll graph those. Zero, zero, one, one, four, two, and nine, three. That's the square root graph. And I bet you some of you have seen that before. Some, maybe only a few. Okay. Well, just like the parabola is like that U shape, there's also one that's a V shape. You guys know what the V-shape one is? That one's absolute value. So that's the last one. I'm not going to make you make a whole chart for it and everything. I'm just going to give you a quick sketch. I understand you. Some, somebody has to leave early, don't they? Just, maybe that wasn't this hour. Different hour. Okay, absolute value. V-shape. Looks like this. If you had to move, you could always make an XY chart. And you could put in like 1 and get 1. Negative 1 and still get 1. 2 and get 2, negative 2 you still get 2 because the absolute value makes it positive. And that's where all these points come from. It's kind of like a parabola except it's more of a sharp turn. Straight lines on each side. Does that make sense? Okay, those are the parent functions and these are a big deal. There are 12 parent functions that you have to know for by the time you're done with pre-calc. You're going to learn 6 of them this year. And next year in pre-calculate the other six. Okay, so these are going to keep coming back over and over and over. What's so the memorize them. Uh, it all depends on how you count it. Um, but the last one I want to teach you today, I want to stay focused on these for now, uh, is a circle. I know you know what a circle looks like, but do you know what the equation for a circle looks like? You're doing good, actually. Like K and um, H. Plus you got all kinds of right things in there. And then there's like X and Y. All right, I'm going to give you a... Yes, <laughs> Let's say that... H is like the point of like the... Is a 5. Radius of 5. Then here would be the equation for it. You want to try to tell me what you think it is, or do you want me to just do it? That would be like 25 equals... There is it equals 25 in it, yes. Um, it's the point of the center of the yeah, circle, yeah. which is like the K and H, and then it's... You're overthinking it. Minus? I don't know. And then it's like... X squared plus Y squared equals 25. That's the equation for this circle. <laughs> now, the H and the K thing you're talking about, you're not wrong. When I move this center from being at zero, zero to somewhere else, then you're gonna have that H and K thing and I'll show you what I mean. So imagine for a moment, it's just a smaller circle and it's over here. Let's say it only has a radius of one. And let's say it's center, right there, that spot there is at nine comma two. Let's see if you catch on to what I'm gonna do here. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. Does that make sense so far? Now, how about the fact that I moved it way over here? It's over this far and up that far. Then it means minus 9 and minus 2. There's the center of the circle. And there's the radius. Kind of curious what you're talking about. Let's say I did pick a point on the outside of the circle. What, what do you want to know about that? Or what do you think we should do with that? Well, what are you trying to find out? Circle. Okay, so what does this equation do? That's a very good question. What does this do? 
it gives you a bunch of points that are on the circle. If you keep putting in different numbers for x and y and you make them work, then you'll find all the points that are on the circle. All right, let's see if you can go backwards. What if I said this? What do you think the radius of the circle was? Yes, 12. Do you know how we got that? It must have been a 12 squared at the end there, right? So then the radius must be 12. Okay, and then where was the center of this circle? It isn't at zero, zero, it's been moved. Do you feel like it's moved two to the right, two up, two to the left, or two down? The center of the circle. Two to the right is correct. And it has a radius of 12, so it'd be like a really big, that's the worst circle in the world, but I think you get the idea. The radius of that would be 12. Okay, that's the last function you had to learn. Now, sadly, got to teach you some more stuff. Let me uh, keep teaching you some stuff. This next thing is about domain and range. Oh, wait, and there's one more parent function. Darn. While I'm still on the parent function topic, let me teach you one more. 1 over x. This function also goes through 1, 1. Little known fact, almost every function that you ever learn will go through 1, 1. It's kind of strange. But think about it. y equals x squared. When I stick in 1, I get 1. y equals absolute value of x. When I stick in 1, I get 1. y equals x to the third. When I stick in 1, I get 1. Do you get what I'm saying? 1, 1 is on pretty much every parent function. So it's on this one too. How do I know? If I made an xy chart and I stick in 1, look what happens. I get y equals 1 over 1, which is 1. So yeah, 1, 1's on all of these. But here's what's different about this one. This function gets closer and closer and closer to 0, but never will touch it in either direction. On the graph, we show this with a dotted line at 0 and a dotted line at zero this way. And we say that the graph has asymptotes. I know this is a lot, and some of you are drifting, but you need to write this down or you're not gonna remember it. Because this is the x-axis and everybody's gonna think it was at x equals zero, but it's not. The x-axis is where y equals zero. And then there's some people that are going to forget horizontal versus vertical. Is that dotted line that's going left to right here, this dotted line here, is that horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. And it's called, the dotted line is called an asymptote. Now take a wild guess what this green dotted line is this way. Whoa, hold on a second. I went off pretty badly there because I was looking down at my recording bar there. Well, that's the y-axis, Mr. Server. Should I call it y equals zero then? X equals zero. And it's also an up and down line. What's the vertical? I'm sorry, I just said it. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the name for that? Vertical. And last but not least, it's called a vertical what? Asymptote. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. Okay. Is it just in the case of this function? No. Anytime you see a dotted line where the function gets closer and closer to it and never touches it, that's an asymptote. You'll see it more asymptotes on different functions. There's actually 12 functions, and there's probably at least three of them that have asymptotes in it. All right, and I'm not done with this function because if you do some numbers that are negative, like for instance, if I put in negative one, then I'm gonna get one over negative one, which is negative one. 
So there's this spot, and that means there's one down here. Feel like you've seen that one before? That is the function y equals 1 over x. That is called the rational function. A rational is a number that can be written as a fraction. I'm going to rewrite this thing. I totally get, like, not feeling like you can concentrate much more. I feel the same way. We're going to make it through this. One more little topic. I know. It's a lot. But it's one of these deals where you don't have to have it mastered today. But I do need to introduce you to all of these things today. This last one's called domain and range. So if I want to make the square root function. It looks like this. Its domain is how far does this function go when it comes to its left and right? Does it go forever in both directions? No. It only goes forever to the right. So the way I would write this is that it goes from 0 to infinity. And it can be zero, pay attention to this part now. So I'm putting a bracket around the zero because it can touch that. And it can't be infinity, so I'm putting a parenthesis around that. Stay with me, copy this down. You need at least one good domain and range example for yourself. That was the domain we just did. Domain is about the x's. Take a wild guess what the range is all about. Why? When it comes to the y values, this thing only starts at 0 and it just goes up from there. The range is from 0 to infinity. And what's the difference between a parenthesis and a bracket again? Parentheses mean it can't touch that. Like you can't get to infinity. It doesn't touch there. Bracket? Bracket means it can touch there. My function touches at zero. So I say zero bracket to infinity. Now, I'm not sure you really understood what we were doing there, so I'm going to give you one, and I'm going to see if you can tell me what its domain and range are. I'm going to take this guy, move it up, and it's the square root function you've seen before. And I'm going to say that that point right there is at 1 comma 3. And I want to know what's its domain and what's its range. Hint, I want answers kind of like this. <coughs> Write down what you think the domain and range are. I'm not right there. I, I, I'm wrong. I'm just trying to show you an example of how the range and domain look. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. And then we'll get into the Schoology quiz. I'll do a couple with you before we're done so they can start your homework. Once you started, my daddy always said you're halfway done if you get started. All right. I hope you said the domain is about the x and therefore it's about the 1 and it did not touch the 1, parentheses. Why did I tell it didn't touch? Because that's an empty circle right there. If that had been a filled in circle, I would have said it touched the one. It didn't touch the one. And I know that's kind of tricky. That's why I'm talking about it. And then it goes to infinity. Raise your hand if you had the infinity part right, at least. Okay, good. How many of you had a one there, but maybe had a bracket on the one? All right. Now, try to remember, it's not just on numbers you use brackets and on infinities you improve parentheses. It's not that. It's if whether it touches it or not and you can't touch infinity. All right, how about the range? On the range here, it's the low to the high. So how low does it go? And then how high does it go? What's the lowest it goes? I get a ton of people who will say one. 
No, that's the X, so three. What's the highest it'll go? And you never can touch infinity. Can it touch at three? Remember, it's an empty circle. It does not touch at three, so it's parentheses. There's your answer to so the domain and range of that one. Okay, now I believe we have covered everything you'd have to know. That's a lot of stuff. There'll definitely be some review before you take a test on this stuff. But that was a lot, I know, I get it. All right, so now let's get into the homework for today. Uh, I'll go through the first couple problems. One thing for those of you that, at home that are watching the video for here, for today, if you wanna type in square root into Schoology, you say S-Q-R-T, that means square root of like say X. That's how you type in square root. And what if you want to type in like x squared? x power of 2 would be how you'd type in x squared. Okay? Okay, it's all I have for the video for today. Now let me name it. You guys will find the little puzzle piece, the green puzzle piece thing. It's under today's date. And get the quiz started. And don't forget how to type in squared because that will happen right away. But five years later, after it's grown roots for five years, yeah. then it starts growing five inches a day. Are you going to keep it till then? It's just crazy. You think, do you think it'll live in the field? I don't think it'll ever get enough roots to do five minutes a day. Add up. Yeah, you need a little bit bigger. Out in a field, it could do that. Yeah. Or a huge pot. Why do they Why do they grow over time, you know? Like, why do they, like, slowly get better? Well, basically, oh, because the roots get better, The root right? system gets to be, like, yeah. enormous. Yeah. And they can take in tons of water that way and feed themselves. And so, Yes, you may. Mm -hmm.